I'll take the motion to approve the minutes for uh, April 29th first. Second. Okay. Is there a motion that the minutes were posted online before uh, today, although I did not get them out to the media uh, for about today's, yesterday's meeting, but they were up to them. Thank you.
politics. I kind of go around and help city with the charters, and train the city councils, and so on, um, just to keep my mind from turning to mush. Uh, last year, I helped the West Plains on their charter. Uh, the event started, and they passed an equal with, uh, I'm proud to tell you, 77% of the vote. So uh, they did a very good job uh, down in West Plains. And I tell you this, Mr. Chairman, because their chairman was the uh, political science professor at Missouri State, and just a really sharp person. And if you have questions, uh, you should feel free to call him. Uh, he'd be a great source for you. You get a copy of their budget and all kinds of stuff from him. And uh, you can reach him through their city hall, and um, uh, your city clerk will be able to get the uh, uh, information from their city on how to reach him. Just a brief outline about what I'm going to do this evening. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the difference between statutory cities and home rule cities. Second, we're going to talk briefly about the process and the Constitution, the guidance that the Missouri Constitution gives you for what you're about to do. And finally, we're going to talk about Markinson's advice to charter commissions. Uh, you can take some of this advice, you can ignore some of this advice, there's no extra charge for this advice, uh, and it's based on uh, my experience with probably 15, 18 charter commissions over the years. And your task, of course, is not just drafting the charter, but educating the voters. Drafting the charter is just half of it. Talk about classification of cities in Missouri. There's two types of cities in Missouri. There are statutory cities and home rule cities. The formal name for a home rule city is a constitutional charter city. Home rule city, constitutional charter city, the same thing. I call them home rule cities because I have a hard time pronouncing constitutional charter cities. But you're going to hear both of them, and I just want you to know that they're the exact same thing. Let's talk about statutory cities first. There's villages, there's fourth class cities, there's third class cities. You all know what Ray County is currently. They're a fourth class city. You know what the largest fourth class city in Missouri is? Anybody? Uh, St. Peter's, St. Charles County. And Gladstone's, not Gladstone, that's my city. Grandview is right behind you. They're about 25,000 fourth class city. As a fourth class city, you're regulated by Chapter 79 in the statutes that sets forth your structure of government uh, and the options you have in the duties of your officers. Statutory cities are governed by state law. You only have the powers and forms of government specifically granted by state statute. And you have relatively few options. For example, you have no authority for initiative and referendum. Uh, the statutes say that you divide your city into at least two wards and elect two aldermen to standard two year terms from each ward. You elect your mayor uh, for two years. Recently, there's been some options for fourth class cities. A council can give the mayor a four year term. I don't know if you've done that right now. Yeah, okay. And the council can have a four-year term, but that takes a vote of the people, the members of the Board of Aldermen to have a four-year term. So the Municipal League has over the years given you some options, but there's a lot of things you can't do. For example, you can't elect some of your council members at large. They all have to come from wards to uh, each ward. <laughs> Anything that's not specifically authorized by statute is prohibited. Back in the 1960s, fourth class cities had no authority to control needs on private property. The legislature gave you that authority in 1967. Prior to that, people would affect their weeds. They could grow and cause all kinds of problems. There's nothing that you can do. Same thing with dangerous buildings. That authority was given to you in 1969. <coughs> if buildings are about to collapse, now you can go in and require them to be leveled off. And, and, uh, Made safe. Whatever the legislation gives you, they can take it away. They can either do it purposefully or they can do it accidentally. 
accidentally they repeal laws, they didn't know they were repealing. They have to go back next year uh, and enact them. Another problem is that the statutes applying to four black cities are kind of archaic because they've been adopted over the last 130 years uh, by legislators from throughout Missouri to apply to all the fourth class cities. And so what they've adopted to apply to you applies to East Lynn, Missouri, a place I'm going to in two weeks that has about 700 people. So, you know, they may not fit right now. Also, you're subject to further changes in the statutes, whether you like them or not. When I was with the municipal league, every year we had bills in. Uh, one saying that in fourth class cities you had to appoint your police chief, you couldn't elect a marshal. And on the other hand, in third class cities, and another bill said you had to um, elect your municipal judge, you couldn't appoint your municipal judge. There's always stories behind these bills, by the way, that go back to a particular city. We'd always have to scurry around and defeat these, uh, uh, these bills. Part of our terms of office, they always like to. Uh, there's always bills dealing with terms of office for collectors and mayors and so on. And what the municipal thing would always do is make them local options, change them to a local option. Um, you're going to find people who say, everything's just fine right now. I don't want to change anything. Well, the only way they can guarantee to keep what you have is to put it in charge. Because in the legislature, That's, that's statutory suits. And I will take one of my pauses to see if there's any questions so far. I talk about the home rule or constitutional charter suits now. I do have a question. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't pause long enough. Uh, I mean, you just made a statement that really concerns me. Uh, so, so everything that the city of Raytown has adopted as far as codes and ordinances, if, it's, if it can be possibly repealed by the state, it could be. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, sure. Sure. They could take it that it would remove your authority to adopt building codes by reference, or te all technical codes by reference. Yeah. I just want to make sure that was clear to everybody here. Yeah. Thank you. Let, you are, I'm, you're a statutory city, the legislature controls. Home rule cities. I have to talk a little bit about the history of them. It sounds boring, but it's really fascinating. Going back to the early 1800s, the conflicts between the federal government, the states, and the cities. But we're going to start in about 1865. We're going to be really brief. The Civil War is over with. Everyone's moving west. Trying to raid down, going west. Cities are growing all over the Midwest and the West. What did a city mean to drive in 1970? What was the interstate highway in 1970? The railroads. If the railroad hit your city, you were going to prosper. If the railroad missed your city, you were going to blow away in the wind. So what cities started doing is issuing bonds, building railroad spurs to look up with the railroad when it missed them. Those lines were broke, the bonds got forfeited, people lost their savings, there was a huge human cry for lawsuits. They ended up with a judge in Iowa, Judge Dillon, in about 1870 or so. And he issued an opinion that became known as Dillon's Rule. Judge Dillon said, cities are creatures of the state, and they only have those powers that the state specifically gives them or could be implied. That was the law in 1870, and it's still the law today for statutory cities. But immediately after his decision, the Home Rule Movement began. And believe it or not, Missouri led the way. In 1875, we adopted a new constitution. And in that constitution, we provided that our largest cities could provide their own structure of government by drafting home rule charters for adoption by the voters. We led the nation 
There are those of us who spent our careers working in local government who feel that was the last time Missouri led the way in anything innovative for our cities. But back in 1875, we were cutting edge. In 1946, we lowered the population requirement to 10,000. In 1971, we amended the Missouri Constitution again. We did two things. First, we lowered the population to 5,000. And the second thing is far more important. We gave home rule cities much more flexibility and authority to solve their own problems. Prior to 1971, a charter was a grant of powers. And you had to find the power your charter. So charters would have a section on heat control and dangerous buildings and dog control and everything else is in their charters. And after 1971, the charter became a limitation on powers. And home rule cities were assumed to have all the powers not specifically limited or prohibited by the Constitution, by state laws, or the Charter. So instead of having a chapter on weeds in your Charter, you just be silent on it and you adopt an ordinance on weeds. What, what do this do to your job in drafting a Charter? Simplify it. Oh, yes, it simplifies it. You look at the 371 Charters, look at Kansas City's. Look at St. Louis, look at Independence, look at Blue Springs in the sun, 30, 40 pages. Much, much shorter, much easier to do. You're doing the skeleton, and it's fleshed out by ordinances later on. You put the basic structure in there, and then it's filled out by ordinances. It makes things much, much easier. Much easier. We have 41 home rule cities in Missouri. They've adopted a wide variety of charters and forms of government. Some of them are council manager, like my hometown, University City, or Columbia, or Dauphin. Some have city administrator, Blue Springs, New Summit, Belton, Rainmore. And some just have mayor council. Tom Myra Forreston. The term charter is a neutral term. You may come across someone who says, I lived in Kansas City, they have a charter, I didn't like Kansas City, so I'm against the charter. That doesn't make sense. They're against the Kansas City charter, which has nothing to do with what you're doing. It's what goes into the charter that matters. The term charter is meaningless. So it goes into it. The basic philosophic assumption about what you're doing is that the citizens of Raytown can best devise their own constitution rather than rely on state laws. That's the assumption. A couple of things that will help you. I've told several of you about the model charter for Missouri cities, published by the Missouri Municipal League. Every single one of you need this. It's going to be your Bible for the next year. It's got everything you need to know. It's got uh, a section on all the issues you need to resolve. It tells you everything you need to know about the model. So if you don't have it, I'm sure the city clerk's office can get those off the internet or website um, for you. Also, you can get other charters. Uh, your chairman said he's got four or five that he's memorized already. Yeah. Uh, again, don't get, do not get any of the pre-1971 charters. You're wasting your time. Only get charters that were adopted after 1971. So don't get independence or, or Kansas City. So that's what a home rule city is. And any questions about that? I'm going to proceed to Markinson's advice, Charter Commissions. I do have a question. Oh, good. <laughs> on the, you said that the Charter needs to be that skeleton framework. Mm -hmm. Is there a template of that sort? Is that what you're referring to? A model city charter is your template. Okay. And it's got various options, but it's got everything you need. You may want to add other things, you may want to take something out, but it's everything you need. 
using that template would be our kind of a skeleton starting place. That would be your starting place. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the cities that you have worked with and have used that that uh, model city charter structure, how many of them got used only that, or how many got? Well, no one would use only that, but they would use it as their basis. The last time we did this, just a few years ago, people wanted to put everything under the sun in it, and it was just a disaster. Um, what would, what do you suggest to cities to look at first when they're looking at a charter, trying to put together a charter? I, I would suggest you start with chapter, chapter one of the or section one of the model charter and go from there. Chapter one, the it is. Yeah, that, that's the basic stuff. Uh, probably the city council, the structure of the city council, the powers of the city council. That's what I probably start with. That's often one of the most difficult things. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to backtrack because I have not told you what the Missouri Constitution tells you you have to do from this point onward. It doesn't give you a great deal of guidance, but it gives you a little bit. First of all, if you have any vacancies on your commission, someone moves out of town or they get sick or they run out of the meeting screaming, I don't want to hear any more problems with the public works department, they send you a letter of resignation. The members of the commission fill all vacancies. The city council will pay all necessary expenses of the commission. Well, your primary <coughs> expenses are going to be printing, printing copies of the charter and a um, explanation summary of the charter. You're going to have some legal expenses. You may have some uh, expenses that reimburse travel and bring people to talk to you. The charter must be submitted to the voters by April of 2015. God, that seems so far away. <laughs> One year. Um, as a practical matter, I think you should be done, finalized completely with your work by eight, eight and a half months. Done at the printers so that you will have time to explain to the voters what's in that chart. If there is a particularly controversial issue that can be separated, you can submit that as a separate issue to the voters. For example, when I lived in Jefferson City, the first time we voted on the charter was in the late 70s, and we still had partisan municipal elections. And the Charter Commission was just unanimous for nonpartisan elections. And they put that into the Charter, and the uh, Democratic and Republican single county committees got together, and the Charter was defeated. Uh, about five years later, we had a new Charter Commission, and um, they put that issue as a separate, they separated that out, and partisan elections won. The, the, the charter was adopted and partisan elections won. And then about five years after that, the council submitted a charter amendment to a nonpartisan and that passed overwhelmingly. It should be a charter amendment, not an Charter, yeah, that's right. We'll talk about an in the charter just a minute. In fact, we'll talk about it now. The, the charter is adopted by a simple majority, 50% plus one. Your charter is not like the Ten Commandments. It's not etched in stone. It can be amended. There's three ways to amend a charter. Uh, one way is to elect a new charter commission. Now, this is used only by those pre-1971 cities that may have lots of changes to make in the charter. The second way is the city council can put a charter amendment to a vote of people. And two, uh, a petition signed by 10% of the registered voters and put a charter amendment uh, before the voters. So 
the charges can be amended, and if you make a mistake, it's no problem. You just come back and, and uh, I'll depend on the mistake, I guess. <laughs> but you can always come back and fix it. And that is all the Constitution tells you. After that, you've got to rely on Parkinson's rules or Parkinson's advice to charge the rules. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, real quick, you said one of the reasons, one of the avenues a charter could be amended is to do by a, a petition of 10% of the registered voters. Um, I assume that's how, that's the avenue of how all charter cities post-1971 operate when they're amending their charters. I guess what I'm getting at, is there any need for a charter commission when they write a charter to put some kind of charter review commission or anything like that? You know, I, I, have, I have heard of, uh, of that being done, and it would say something like uh, five years from, from the adoption of the charter, the city council will appoint a review committee to make recommendations to the council on charter amendments. I have heard, I can't tell you which cities do it, but I do know that some do it. Not a bad idea. So the Constitution doesn't tell you very much. Yes, did you have a question? Um, um, you did say that the city council pays for all expenses of the commission. Mm -hmm. And is there, so that's the only guideline, is that the city council has to pay? I don't get the exact word. It's used in the Constitution. All necessary expenses. And there's no definition of that. That is correct. And there's no um, cap. That's correct. I only know one problem that's caused. I can't think of what city it was. <laughs> they hired a law firm and they sent the city a humongous bill. And the city negotiated with the law firm and, and, and got it reduced. Here. <laughs> Was that you guys? Oh! That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Because there, there does need to be some structure to cost. I mean, it just can't be. I'm talking about that in my advice to charter commissions. But um, basically, what I'm going to say is the officer should prepare a budget and give it to the city so the city knows how to do their own budget and what to budget for you. And that's why I suggest West Plains would be a good city to budget to get a copy of their budget uh, since they just went through it. Also, Nick says it's relatively recent. Uh, charge has been about three to four years, but uh, they probably just have that information on what their budget was. Okay, thank you. Okay. You've all got your open office and you like your officers. I think the officers should meet and prepare a budget, give it to the city council, give it to the city administrator. That's just fair to them so they know how to budget their own money and prepare for it. And also, I think you should have a timeline on chapter by chapter how you're going to do this charter. There's nothing worse than seven months from now waking up and realizing you're only halfway through. It's, uh, he said the officers do that. Uh, I can't recommend that they do There's nothing that I'm telling you that you have to do. These are all my advice. Well, and, I, and I'm not opposed to that. I would just want to make sure that we, the officers, wherever they are at the time, would make sure that we brought that to the commissioners. For sure. Sure. Have a good one. You need to select a meeting time and an adjournment time. The worst mistakes elected city officials make occur after 10 o'clock at night. After 10 o'clock at night, they'll go on anything to get to go home. Adjourn, I can adjourn at 10 o'clock at night. Um, and it's amazing how people will put their business into the time slot they have and they know that there's a 10 o'clock adjournment. <coughs> also, you need the appropriate set And I need to tell you, I'm not wild about your setting here. I prefer a conference table with an open spot at the end where people can talk to you. Uh, this is just a little bit too formal for 
but this is up to you. I'm just telling you my opinion. I would like the city to set up a, 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 a big square conference table with a spot for people to talk to you from. Take it for what it's worth. You need some operating rules. Because sooner or later, later he's going to make a motion. She's going to offer an amendment. She's going to offer a substitute. You're going to say you're confused. You want to postpone it to next week. And you need to know how to take those motions in order. The city may have some good operating rules that you could adopt. Some people adopt Robert's Rules of Order, but nobody reads Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, there's a simplified Robert's Rules of Order. That's what we adopted. You've already adopted it. You're way ahead of me. Okay. All of your commission meetings and any committee meetings that you have are subject to the Open Meetings Law. This is very important. You have to post notice 24 hours exclusive of weekends. Who's going to post your notices? City clerk, your secretary, that needs to be um, understood by all parties who's going to do that. There's nothing worse than the Kansas City Star talks about the Ray Town Charter Commission violates the Sunshine Law. You don't want that. So you need to make sure who's going to post. Okay. Who's going to post? You need to encourage public involvement news media informed of what you're doing. A lot of charter commissions wait till they and after the charter is at the printers and they sit down with the news media. It's much better to meet with them a couple times beforehand. I, I like to take them to coffee. You know, you know the reporters who cover your city or the radio stations. Take them for coffee and tell them, you know, tell, here's, here's some of the problems we're having is we haven't quite decided this, but we, we, we worked out this issue. They'll buy into the program. And if you're not coming to them when it's over, they may have suggestions for you. Get them involved. The more people you get involved, the better off you're going to be. Decide if you want to record sessions. I'm sure you've already done that. Decide if you want to farm committees. Some charter commissions will farm committees. The most common ones are finance, administration, and legislation. Personnel and transition. Um, and some, some charter commissions work as a group of, of, of the whole. You've got your choice. You need to determine if the city is going to provide you with services or if you have to hire your own secretarial services, legal services. You want to be able to call on an attorney if you need it. You can call on the city attorney. Uh, that needs to be worked out uh, with your city administrator. I would suggest you invite city officials, past and present, to talk about the current structure of government in Raytown and the problems that they've encountered. Um, you have, everyone on your commission needs to have a thorough knowledge of the existing structure of government. And I know a lot of you have been on city council, some of you are on city council, um, but others aren't. You should bring them all up to speed so that everyone has the same, um, the same information. Do you need public input? I suggest you come up with a list of civic leaders in your community and formally invite them by letter to talk to the commission. Most of them won't do it, but boy, they'll sure be flattered that you asked, and they'll know you tried. And they'll remember that. Start your education efforts early. Don't wait till you're done. Talk to your news media. Talk to your civic groups. You need a list of the civic groups, the Rotary, the Kiwanis, the Elks, the Lions, whatever you have here in right now, Chamber of Commerce. Don't go to them after you're done. Go to them once before you're done just to tell them what you're doing. So they won't be surprised when you say, hey, next month we're open on the charter. Bro. Where'd that come from? <laughs> you didn't hear to them. So you thought you were just going to have to sit up there one night. <clears throat> you, you, can spread a little, you can spread some of this around. You don't have to do it all on your own. And most important, I'm sure you know, 
know this is when you do your charter and solve that, make sure you have a two-page summary of the charter. You know, you may draft a fabulous document, you may be so proud of it, you may think it rivals Plato's Republic. I got a lot of relatives in right now, I'm not going to read your four-page charter. But they'll read a two-page summary. They'll read a two-page summary. It's not a campaign piece I'm talking about here. It's not vote yeses. Here's what the charter does. And again, the city pays for that too. Okay, what this is is an opportunity for you to draft a charter to conform with the needs of right now. Your motto should be preserve the best, improve the rest. Try to approach decisions with an open mind. When you've drafted, when you're finished with your charter, but before it goes to the printer, I recommend you have an experienced city attorney review it. And I have a number of really good ones in the Kansas City area that are blessed with really, some really fine attorneys here. Uh, any one of which would uh, uh, do it. And I think it would only cost the city a few hundred bucks. But you need to do that. It needs to be reviewed by an attorney. And then you go to work explaining it. And your work is done. I've given your chairman my phone number, and I'd be glad to entertain uh, if you have questions during your, your deliberations. Uh, you're welcome to call me. Glad to help. Um, other than that, I'm glad to answer any questions you have. We can talk about why some city charters fail. That's always an interesting topic. But I've had to be I'm part of my about that, so. That completes what I have to say to you, Mr. Chairman. Well, it was very informative. Um, and I think it was also not only informative for us, but it was informative for the general public that got a chance to hear it because uh, they're the ones that elected us to do this job. I assume this is on your local cable TV. There you go. Yes, it will be good. I'll have to call up my relatives. I'll be watching. They always wonder what I did. <laughs> now they won't know any more than they did before. All right, thank you very much. If there's any other questions, Mr. Marks. I will definitely be getting back with you. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
unclear, and frankly, our discussions could be a little bit more clear that way, so we're not talking over each other by accident.
suggestion that I offered was to have a, a, a point of contact for the City Hall. In reference to City Hall, um, I felt that there was some interesting avenues for dialogue taking place with our contact with requests from the City Clerk, and I felt it would be best to have a, uh, a point of contact for City Hall that way. Anything that we need to ask of the city would go through this individual or, or, or individuals. Um, and I would feel free to open this up to see what you guys' opinions are on this. But I, I don't have a direct motion as of yet in terms of who this individual could be, if it's going to be a separate individual, or if it would be um, just the elected board being the chair, the vice chair, the treasurer. Um, the secretary to serve as a point of contact with City Hall. Uh, so I guess what I'd like to hear is what you folks think about that that idea. I think it's a good idea. I don't think that we should have point of contact only um, the chair, the vice chair, the secretary, the treasurer. I think it needs to be uh, maybe two people. One that's on the board and then another commission. Other discussion? Chair only if the 
chair is not available, um, the secretary, and another individual that we shall elect. Is that correct? Does that sound fine to you, Mary? Yeah. Okay. So I just yeah. okay. Thanks. So the motion would be would be to elect a point of contact beyond the chair. Vice chair, when the chair is not available, and the treasurer, or excuse me, and the uh, secretary to be a point of contact to see all. You have a second? Oh, you, you did a second. Yeah. Okay, I'll add that. Any other further discussion? Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm clear. So we're having four people as points of contact. The main two would be the chair. And the uh, secretary. With backups being the vice chair and one of the point commissioners. Correct. And what I'm also understanding is that the third person on that group would be involved in whatever got discussed before it went to the city. I mean, oh, you know what I'm okay. saying? So that all three were making the common decision, I guess you might say. All so three of them. Well, Free with information going in if it, it need be. Okay. Is that is that is okay. that right? Do I do we need to amend that or? Good question. Sorry. Go for it. Um, what if we, for instance, need to ask City Hall, can we have a projector the night beforehand or something to that effect? Do we need to make a decision amongst three of them before we can inquire to City Hall? Well, that's a good point, but I think, uh, I don't know if we need to get to that detail. I think it's more if we're asking for information from the city or we're trans transmitting the information to the city other than that kind of information. I mean, that's a simple request. Okay, just, sorry, to clarify, um, with, you said since the Green motion. 
Jason Green motions that we elect a point of contact for City Hall, the armor chair for the Vice Chair, the Chair's Audio Board and Secretary, for information and substance. Is that okay with everyone? Yes. 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 Yes.
guess with so many other things going on here, I did forget to uh, ask for nominations or uh, for the other point of contact. I'll just sort of skip that. I don't take any uh, nominations at this time. setting this up, uh, I think uh, this is one of the points that Mr. Markison was uh, uh, giving us as far as trying to keep the general public and everybody advised as we uh, uh, meet with our own civic groups that we're all involved in. It would be good that uh, we let them know that this time is available for them. And as we are in our civic organization, uh, let's try to educate uh, them as to what's going on in the process we're going try to uh, do some type of quick summary for what the charter is going to do so we can actually have a, a point of reference uh, for us all to speak from. That would be good. Lisa, are you ready? Yes, sir. Thank you. The Town Charter Commission website, it is, uh, I, I made the website on Google uh, Sites. Uh, so it's very easy to maintain. Uh, if we, multiple people on the board wanted to help add files, delete files, that sort of thing, change information, it would not be a big deal. A um, few menus on the side here. The first one, it, they do them in alphabetical order. So. Um, I put together a, a couple weeks ago a list of all the charters in Missouri that I could find. I found, I believe, 39 out of the 41 charters. Um, these are the first list is, are the charters with PDFs that I could find, and all the way down here, you can download them, the media can download them, the public can download them to see what's in them. So we got a lot to look at. Um, I also put a link to what Mr. Markinson was describing about the template for our charters and explanations for each section. That's the charter guide, and then there's a simple document about how Missouri municipalities are classified. Up here are links to charters that do not have PDFs that are downloadable. They are online and you can read them there. And the two I could not find are Augustine College. And then I also included down here in the downloadable section, Raytown's uh, past four proposed charters from 1962, 1967, 1997, and 2005. Uh, Jefferson County's charter, just for comparison's sake, if you wanted to see how a county does something versus a city. And of course, the two things I listed earlier the charter guide and municipality classification. Um, link to the meetings. 
we'll discuss our future schedule later. Uh, this is the proposed future schedule, uh, so it's not to conflict. But um, it will have meeting dates for the public, list of agendas. Um, our first meeting, our very brief next meeting at this meeting's agenda. Minutes from past meetings uh, that I should put, in the, in the future I will put uh, draft if they have not yet been approved so we don't get confused about what we're looking at. And a link to videos, um, for instance, Mr. Downing uh, recorded our first uh, meeting and so that's on YouTube and I'll put a link to any recordings we have there. A list of our membership and if they've given me their phone numbers, I put them there. If we have their emails, I put them there and their names there. Our officers, their information, and any subcommittees we may or may not have, so we can put the new um, list of points of contact as a subcommittee if we'd like. And the rules the Charter Commission is governed by, just so everybody can have easy access to know how we run, whether it be ourselves or the media. So um, that's what I've got so far. Any questions, comments, suggestions? I think you did a really good job on that, and I do appreciate when you sent the email out about it because I was like, wanted to plan ahead meeting watch, and I think that's something where it is all combined in one spot. And I do want to ask again if one we have the comments section, so people are not putting the comments. Right, I've disabled the comments section on right. there. I assume that if the public wants to comment, they can do so at the meetings or email us individually right. as a group. Because we've now given that opportunity for the public comment section of our meetings. But we did a lot of good work on that. Thank you. To look this up, you just type in right now, Charter Commission? Yes, you can do that, or um, I will send a link to the media tonight um, if we approve it as the <coughs> official uh, website for our body. Um, Sites.google.com forward slash site forward slash Raytown Charter. Go ahead. I just want to say thank you. This is awesome. I got a chance to check it out. I think it's great. It organizes what's going on and it's an important piece to um, help educate the public on what we're doing, the progress we're making, what the issues are, and how to contact them to express any uh, thoughts or ideas to share. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. You are very welcome. Um, that was my intention is to keep everybody informed and to try to get as many citizens interested and able to communicate back and forth to know what's going on as possible. Thank you.
Um, first, I'd, I'd suggest that everyone get a chance to get this MML model charter. Um, I've had a chance to print this off, and it's a nice template for, um, for organization in terms of structuring this. Uh, and again, I, I want to work on this at the will of this commission. I, I think it'd be a good idea to kind of start, you know, with all these charters are pretty much the same kind of concept in terms of Article 1. It's pretty simple, something that I feel like it could be easily voted on at a later date and, and affirmed. You know, Article 1 talks about incorporation and name and boundaries and things such as that and uh, implied powers, if you will, of, of the city, uh, leaving it with that type of wording. So therefore, again, like Mr. Marcus has said, you don't have to write a whole article on Code maintenance, housing maintenance, or weed maintenance, if you will, you know, whatever that may be. Um, article 1 has to do with corporation boundaries. Like I said, Article 2 has to do with just the implied powers of the city, uh, the construction of such. And I think these are types of things that I feel like could, very be, could be streamlined, that could be easier, if you will, to, to vote on by this, by this commission so that we can start having a, a template down for, for what we're doing, how we're doing. In a sense, also creating some sort of a timeline. Again, by using this MML model charter, uh, it's easy to find on the uh, on the internet. And here, I just did a quick Google search of MML model charter and was able to find it. But I'd be more than willing to uh, let folks, if they don't have access to the bar, have my copy, if you will, or if not. Um, yes, that's fine. Oh, it's also on the website there, too. Yeah, but if you guys don't have a printer or something, I can print off for you that you can take care of. But, I think this is a great template for us to look at, and uh, I, I, my suggestion would be to kind of start, you know, with Article One. This is very easy and simple in terms of incorporation into boundaries. Go to Article Two, Article Three, and so on, based off this you know, model chart.
we want to make sure that not only are our commissioners heard, but those of the public that speak are heard. Um, I will talk to Teresa uh, and see what that possibility might be as far as getting some additional mics. Uh, but I would prefer that setting. Is anybody else uncomfortable with that setting or would prefer this one? <coughs> Okay, I don't think we need a motion of that or something like that, but uh, I, I, I agree very much so. Uh, and the other part of your kind of your Can you know this? Oh, I I think we uh, need to begin that process, but he was pretty clear on the fact that uh, this whole uh, uh, charter needs to be put together given to an attorney for basically a, a review and a look and uh, I've read through most of these charters and I think uh, with the expertise that we have on this commission that we should be able to write a pretty good one that can be reviewed by an attorney at the, at the end of the process. How do you feel about getting the budget and the uh, charter from West Knights at this stage there because he seemed to think they did a really good job? Um, are you saying that you can do that? <laughs> I don't know, but I think uh, well, I think uh, I'll uh, thank you to do that because I think that would be very important. Okay. Thank you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. um, I guess um, what uh, Jason was saying with the uh, Article 1, I mean, it's a simple one-liner. Um, and anybody that would look at half a dozen charters uh, could easily see that the wording in that is very simple. Um, I, I think uh, uh, I would actually take a couple of volunteers that might want to work together on that and just present that as the next uh, charter meeting. What's that? Article 1 and possibly Article 2. Two or three people that might want to work on that part of it so that we can get that out of the way. Go ahead. Um, are you saying that we are going to go into this more? Yes, I, 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 I agree with you. It. It's going to be too mishmash if we do it that way. If we have a process and we're going through that and it's small, it's you know, easy to do, then we go on to the next one. There's no reason to read it then. So I think. The process is fairly simple. Go ahead, Jason. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, again, my original suggestion, again, uh, folks look at this ML um, model chart, but article one right here, it says incorporation of boundaries. Just a real quick example. It's really not that long. It really just has article one, again, incorporation of boundaries, charter city of Rachel, Missouri. Then you have the date. And it says, in order to provide for the government of the city of Raytown to secure the benefits and advantage of the constitutional home rule under the Constitution of the state of Missouri, the people of Raytown adopt the following charter. And then there's an additional section that just, it's just a commentary of what this document is. And then Article 2 is, uh, is very similar. And it's expressed in a, uh, I won't say open ended, it's not like that word, but it's expressed in a way that we don't have to make charter rules or every little tiny kind of detail. Just, I'm not going to read the whole thing here. It's just a paragraph, but the city shall have all the powers of the General Assembly of the State of Missouri. Uh, has authority to defer upon any city, provided such powers are consistent with the Constitution of the state. And then it says, are not limited or denied by either the charter or the statute or by statute. So something like that, I feel, would be something that's very, frankly, easy to write. And we could maybe have, well, maybe a few folks, if they want to, Maybe write this out so that maybe we can discuss this at the next meeting and, and discuss Article 1 and 2 and maybe make uh, changes to whatever, if people wish, uh, to what these folks write and we can discuss it and then vote upon it. I think that would be, or at least for reading of it, I don't know what the process you guys want to do, but I think that would be a good start. That way we're getting some stuff done and getting kind of our feet wet. Uh, with that, um, I would like one of the people uh, to be on this group. Um, well, at all times, I think it would be important that um, 
if we're going if we're going to have to go to the city for information that at least one of the points of contact is in a subcommittee to make sure that that information can get uh, addressed uh, through that point of contact so um, and then on this one uh, well I think at this point before we go any further um, if we are going to have first and second readings of these, I think we need to make a motion for that. This is how it works here. Um, I'll motion that we have a first reading and then a second reading and vote at the following meeting. I guess that's the correct way of wording that. That way folks have the time to digest everything and have further time to investigate the debate. So again, my motion would be to have a first reading and then the second reading and vote at the next meeting. You mean for every article we do, for for not just the first one? Uh, yes, for, for every for every article we we do, or or, or section. Because these are some of these articles are actually pretty long once we get all down. So once it's read once, people digest it, they come back and make changes. They would make suggestions, I think, at that point, because if we make a motion to adopt it, how many times are we going to read it once? Is my point. Just once. So if you make changes to it after having read it once, that's still the first reading. And whatever changes you make when you read that, that's the second reading. Correct. And so it's very Go ahead. Well, and then you, you read it, make whatever changes so that those changes were they made for the, the second time it's read. And then if any changes are made to that, that would have to be amended. And then everybody agrees on it, okay, now we vote on it. And then it's done. So it's only two meetings. <laughs>
person in my blood joint. If no one else is interested in being the third person, I, I can service that. I'm fine with that. Unless no one else would like. Well, I'm also keep in mind that I would like to get into Article 3 with the city council and just gathering information from the city uh, so that uh, we, when we look at the you know, it's got to be a public meeting in public. Or more than three. No, it's more than two. discuss um, Article 3 City Council. Um, actually, because we have several um, City Council people on the board, I'd like to have a subcommittee in the city of the three uh, to begin that process, and I'm going to allow Jason to act in my place as a point of contact with the city. volunteers for this. I was going to say that being the case. Yeah. Until, until we have an answer to that. We'll keep and then we'll keep it to we can we can start with more of that. Correct. That's what I'm gonna suggest. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now we're just writing and we have a we have a model to start from. Exactly.
Sasha, if we can do it informally, I mean, uh, I don't see any, any problem with that. Yes.
We will meet in City Hall Council Chambers at 6.30 p.m. on the 2nd and 4th Tuesdays of May, the 2nd and 4th Mondays of June, July, and August, the 2nd and 4th Tuesdays of September, and the 2nd and 4th Mondays of October. In other words, as the expected meeting dates currently appear on our website. Also adding that our adjournment will be at 9 o'clock p.m. Oh, and I think it's a second. Any other discussion? Seeing that, what do we think of both of them?